Tokyo Electric Power Company has begun accepting bids for alternative suppliers of electricity. And this is to cover a shortfall that's stemming from the halted operations at Japan's nuclear power plants following the nuclear accident in Fukushima. Just about 50 companies, including steelmakers and trading houses, are taking part in the bidding process. The firms that win will begin supplying a total of 2.6 million kilowatts of power between 2019 and 2021. Now, this amount will be equal to the power generation from two nuclear power plants. TEPCO made it a condition that the bidding price would be below about 10 cents per one kilowatt hour. Coal-fired thermal power plants will be favored candidates due to their lower costs. But Environment Minister Nobuteru Ishihara has expressed some concerns. He says that building new thermal power plants or expanding existing ones will just push up greenhouse gas emissions. Well, the uh, Japanese government is planning now to give financial aid to businesses that are developing shale gas as well as other low-cost energy resources. Industry Minister Toshimitsu Motegi says the government is considering now offering debt guarantees for such companies. Rising fuel costs account for half of Japan's growing trade deficit. It's an urgent task for our country's economy to cut them down. Well, he says natural gas is produced in various countries so Japan can diversify its suppliers. He adds that the cost of natural gas imports can also be reduced. Russian officials in charge of power generation have taken a step that could draw a sharp reaction from leaders in Japan. They've given an affiliate of a U.S. company a contract to build a generating plant on one of four islands held by Russia and claimed by Japan. The officials gave a $30 million contract to a firm called Sakhalin Machinery. The company is based in the capital of the island of Sakhalin. Workers will build a geothermal power plant on the island of Kunashiri. They plan to start construction this year and have the plant running in 2015. Japanese leaders oppose any involvement in economic activity on the island by a third country. They fear the Russians could try to use such involvement to justify their control of four islands, including Sakhalin. South Korean Defense Ministry officials say they remain on alert for the possibility of another nuclear test by North Korea. Spokesperson Kim Min-sook said the North has been preparing for a nuclear test at a southern tunnel, in addition to the western one that was used on Tuesday. Kim said the entrance of the Western Tunnel appears to be intact after the underground explosion. He explained that no radioactive materials had been detected because the tunnel had containment walls to prevent an outflow of blast winds. U.S. researchers point out that there has also been activity at one North Korean missile launch site. They say the launch pad has been upgraded since October. The South Korean spokesperson said military officials are closely monitoring the latest developments. North Korea's state-run newspaper is defending the nuclear test, saying it has reinforced the country's status as a military and nuclear power. A front-page editorial in the Rodon Shinmun quotes leader Kim Jong-un. He calls the test legitimate and refers to it as the people's great work. The newspaper claims the nation's nuclear deterrent is capable of destroying enemy strongholds. It says leaders in Pyongyang won't bend to any further pressure from the U.S. government. And it adds North Koreans are ready for new sanctions and even war.